Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, May 30th, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, whew, everybody down. And Shanghai was down the most, over 2%. And then in Europe, yeah, everything was up a little bit, except cat down a little bit. And here in the States, Dow up over 300, NASDAQ up. Gold up a little bit, oil up. Bitcoin down. Dow jumps more than 300 points after banks rebound. And that following up on their steep losses yesterday over fears of what's going on in Italy that happened over the weekend. And you know what happened over the weekend and why the markets went down so much and where they're going next because you have your trend alert, your trend alert. Currency crashes coming. Why, when, and what to do. Warning. Global currency crash coming. It's bigger than Italy's political power struggle that exploded this past weekend that sent equity markets spiraling down on Tuesday and much, much more. An analysis that you won't find anywhere else. So what happened? Pick up today's Financial Times after yesterday's downturn in the markets. It was down at one point over 500 points. Italy crisis spreads as central bank chief warns investor trust is fading. Oh, investor trust. You mean the banksters? That trust? The gamblers. Oh, yeah, the 1% investors. Oh, I forgot. In the United States, 10% of the people control well over 80% of the stocks, some numbers showing as high as 90% investors. So, Europe and U.S. banks hit. Rome bond yields jump. Concerns for interim government. And you know what happened over the weekend. Cinque Stella and Lega, the two coalition parties, selected Paolo Savona as Minister of the Economy. And... Uh, the president, who's just a figurehead and supposed to follow out what the parties want him to do, said, I don't like this guy. He's too anti-Euro. And he wouldn't allow him to become economics minister. And that was the beginning of why the markets went down on Tuesday. So it's bigger than what the media is reporting. For example, there's a quote in here from CNBC, and it says, quote, I think there's certainly potential for problems in Italy, but there's nothing necessarily new here. The odds of Italy leaving the EU are very remote, said Bruce Bittles, chief investment strategist at Baird. Well, Mr. Bittles, we disagree. This is the beginning. Over the weekend, there were massive demonstrations in the AFD party in Germany. They want to pull out of the euro. They're anti-euro and anti-immigration. And then go, what could happen over there in Spain? They may have a new uh, election, a recall. They want to get rid of Rajoy, who has a very low popularity rating. You're looking at Italy, the third biggest country in the Eurozone, with a debt-to-GDP ratio over 130, unable to form a government, and the people are ready to rebel. As a matter of fact, what happened in Ireland over the weekend, where an estimated 70% of the women in a referendum, blockchain democracy, just not up to blockchain level, but the people going out and deciding for themselves voted to repeal an anti-abortion law. 
that now gives the women the right to do what they want with their body rather than having someone else tell them what to do with it. Again, whether you believe in it or not believe in it, it should be happening. It's your decision. It's a referendum. This is just the beginning of what's going on in Italy, what's going on in Spain, what's going on in Austria. This, ladies and gentlemen, subscribers to the Trends Journal, is the beginning of the end of the Euro, the Eurozone, and the European Union. It's the shot that will be heard around the world for only those listening. If you're turning on the mainstream news in America, you're hearing about Roseanne, more about Stormy Daniels, and what this one said about that one. Out of the news, not a major story. Moving on, again, today's headline. Italian tumult spurs global sell-off. Hey, what changed from yesterday to today? Nothing. The markets are overvalued and overleveraged. The only reason they're going up is because of the rich tax breaks that Trump gave the big companies. The numbers are all there. I've read them to you over and over again. Stock buybacks and merger and acquisition activity is it at an all-time high for this time of the year. So that's what's propping the markets up. When that dollar gets higher, and the dollar is now moving higher at around a six and a half month high, you're going to start seeing real pressure. The Fed won't be able to raise interest rates. Look what's going on over there in Europe. You got negative interest rates from the criminal operation called the European Central Bank. How much lower are they going to lower them when you have this turmoil that's going to affect the economy going on now in Italy that's going to keep spreading? They say they're not going to raise interest rates to 2019, and that was before this. So what's going to happen with the Fed? Yes, they're going to raise interest rates in a few weeks, but how many times more? And the higher they go, the more devalued all those currencies, particularly in the emerging markets. So now they have to service their debt of some $7 trillion with cheaper currency, which means spending more. This is more than a catch-22. Again, it's the beginning of the end of the euro and putting a market crash on the horizon. Spain upheaval deepens Italy market jitters. This was over the weekend. Again, hey, did you hear about Roseanne, what she says? You know what she tweeted last? Hey, did you see Trump's tweets? They don't talk about this. And crude prices, poof, they were down, they popped back up. You know why? Because, hey, here's what was going on over the weekend on Friday. Oil tumbles on supply packed. That's right. And we even talked about it. Where? We said that Russia and Saudi Arabia were talking about, you know, we're not going to hold back production anymore of that 1.8 million barrels a day. And that brought the prices down. But now the prices are going back up because on Wednesday, a report that Saudi Arabia and other OPEC states and non-OPEC allies aim to stick to a global pact on cutting oil supplies until the end of 2018. And they're cutting back on buying Iranian oil. India's Reliance Industries, owner of the world's biggest refiner complex, plans to halt oil imports from Iran. So there you got it. And over there in Brazil, they got that Trucker's strike that's really racking the country. Well, guess what? The FUP Oil Workers Union said workers had joined the call for a nationwide strike 
on at least 20 oil rigs. So that's bringing production down, prices up. And gold. You know, gold hasn't moved much with all this crisis going on in Europe and even a lot of socioeconomic events around the world. But it's stabilizing. I wouldn't even call it that. It's over 1,300, but not by a lot. So goals in that mid-zone right now could go down, could go up. We'll see what happens. Events are going to determine it. Software floor. Trips, Fiat, Chrysler. Bump, ba bump. Yep. They announced they're recalling more than 5 million vehicles in the U.S. and Canada to fix a programming flaw. Oh, but we're going to program them uh, driverless cars, I tell you. Because, hey, it's in and out of the news. Tesla on autopilot crashes into parked police car. Oh, that was only yesterday. Out of the news today. Again, go back to your trends monthly. Go back to your trend alerts. Go back to your trends journals. Go back to your top trends. And we've been calling it first the driverless cliff, man. This is a hoax. It's not happening for a long, long time. The data is there. The facts are there. They can't pull it off. But people are buying into it. And on to some international news. To show you a little bit of propaganda, ladies and gentlemen, from Financial Times. Libyan leaders reach tentative deal to hold poll in December. Rival Libyan leaders reached a provisional agreement to hold elections in December at talks in Paris that were the latest attempt to end seven years of conflict. Of conflict. This is the propaganda in the oil-rich North African state. Libya was plunged into chaos after an uprising ousted longtime dictator Muhammad Gaddafi in 2011. Since then, the country has been divided between rivaled armed groups. Huh. Plunged into chaos by little slime ball Sarkozy. That little clown Cameron over in the UK, yeah, before May. And how about the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, and along with Hillary Clinton, Susan Rice, Samantha Power. Yep, Gaddafi has to go. No financial times. Libya wasn't plunged into chaos after an uprising ousted longtime dictator after regime change, by sick son-of-a-bitches, by psychopaths that you call your presidents, your prime ministers, and your secretaries of this and that. But that's the way they distort it, just like they're distorting the news that came out here. The toilet paper record? Russian journalist is fatally shot in Ukraine. Big story here, yep. The killing of the journalist, a former war correspondent who stirred fury among Russian nationalists with his sharply critical coverage. Oh, I have pretty sharply critical coverage. Anyway, is the latest in a series of attacks, many of them fatal, on outspoken foes of President Vladimir V. Putin, both inside Russia and beyond. Yeah, like that Skirple thing over there. Oh, that's out of the news in the UK, huh? The most deadly poison ever created in the world. Hey, but they're all both okay now, but we can't talk about it or talk to them. And they have the quotes here to make it official. Anton Garishchenko, the Ukrainian lawmaker, a lawmaker, nope. An advisor of the interior minister said <laughs> that the gunman was waiting for the journalist in the stairwell of his apartment building. He described Babchenko, the guy that was killed, quote, another martyr for the freedom of Russia and for the peace of Ukraine. You're a piece of crap because wait till you see what happened here. 
He said investigators would examine the actions of Russian intelligence agencies to get rid of those who are trying to tell the truth, which you, lawmaker, cannot do. And he's not alone over there. Ukrainian Prime Minister's Viktor Groisman publicly accused the Kremlin of carrying out a targeted assassination, citing it, quote, totalitarian machine. The ambassador of Austria described the incident as a cowardly murder. And they even went so far as to publish a photo of the dead Bakchenko lying in a pool of blood. And now, murdered journalist and Putin critic is alive. Death faked by Ukraine security services. Russian journalist who is reported shot and killed in the Ukraine, capital of Kiev, has shown up at a news conference very much alive. Vasily Gritsak, head of the Ukrainian security service, told the news conference the agency, quote, fake. Babchenko's death to catch those who are trying to kill him. You know what that is. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. And that's what it is. This is how they outright lie. They do it all the time. Don't believe me? Hey, believe Obama. Gaddafi has to go. Assad has to go. I'm going to close Guantanamo. First day in office by the end of the year. Believe Bush. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and all the other liars that promoted it, along with the prostitutes. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news. So great.